In the last two videos, we learned about basic route navigation, we learned how to redirect one route to another, and we saw how we could handle those pesky 404 page not found errors. Well, what's left? Well, I'll tell you what's left. Parameters, right? How do we get data from one component to another component during navigation? Well, let's find out. Roll that intro. Before I show you how to implement passing parameters during route navigation, let's take a moment to understand how this sample is put together. First, if we look at our app.component.html, we will see we have to find a simple title and our router outlet. This is where all our navigation is going to occur. Next, let's hop into the app.module.ts file. We can see that we have defined three routes. The first route is for the product's path. And when we reach the product's path, we're going to load the product's component. The next path handles an empty path, and it's going to redirect to the product's component. And next, we have the wild car, which will handle any type of 404 or uh, path not found scenario. Now let's take a quick look at what the product's component looks like. The product's component.html contains a very simple table. Now this table will list a collection of products. And if you look at this ng4 loop we have here, we can see that for each product in the product's collection, we are listing out the product ID, the product name, and the product price. Notice that the product name is surrounded by an anchor tag. This is what we're going to use to navigate to a product details page. You can see this being rendered in the browser on the right hand side. What we want to do in this demo is we want to click on the name of the product and then navigate to the product details page. If we take a look at the product detail component HTML, we can see that this page is a very simple page. It just shows the product name and the product price for the product that we selected on the product list. So let's go ahead and start passing parameters to implement this application. The first thing we want to do is we want to add a path for the product details component. So let's go into our router.module.for root in the app.module.ts, and we're going to add a new path. This path will point to something called product, and the component that we're going to load will be the product details component. Now, we can't just stop here because this product details component is going to expect a parameter. In order to identify a path to support parameters, we're going to add a slash, colon, and the name of the parameter. In this case, the name of the parameter we're expecting is going to be ID. Next, let's go to our product.components.html and let's find the product name that's surrounded in that anchor tag. Now, in a previous video, when we wanted to perform navigation, we would use the router link directive. And then we provided slash product. This would work fine if we're hard coding values. For example, let's say I'm going to hard code to the product ID of two. Let's go ahead and save this and we'll click on say memory card. We can see that we have successfully navigated to the product details page and we pass the ID of two. However, that's not going to work for this situation. We need this ID to be dynamic. So we're going to change the syntax that we're using for this router link and we're gonna use a property binding. Router link wrapped in square brackets equals, and because we're dynamically data binding to a parameter value, we're going to add square brackets. This is going to contain an array. The first parameter is going to be product, and then we're going to data bind to the product dot product ID. I'm gonna save that, and then I'm gonna come back to the browser, and now when I click memory card, we're gonna see one in the URL. If I go back, click pen, we'll see two, go back, click power brink, we'll see three. Now that we have successfully data bound our parameter values to our router link for each item in the products list, we can now handle those parameters in our product details component. So let's head over to the product detail component.ts file. There's actually two ways to handle parameters in Angular. One is called using a snapshot and the other is by using an observable. Let's talk about using a snapshot first. Using a snapshot will use what's called the activated route snapshot property. So to begin, let's go ahead and inject private. We'll call this route, and this is the activated route. Now we're gonna have to add a using statement, which is import activated route from angular slash router. Once we have this activated route and the ng on init, we can grab the ID. Let ID equal this dot route snapshot param map 
app.get and then the name of the ID, which in this case is the ID. Next, we're going to say this.product equals this.productService.get product, and we're going to pass in the ID that we received from the parameter map. Let's go ahead and save our work and let's click on memory card. And now we can see we navigate to the detail page and we are loading the memory card information, the name and the price into the product object, which is being displayed by the product detail component. I can go back and hit pin drive. We can see the pin drive information, go back, hit power bank, and we see the power bank information. That's a pretty easy scenario. However, you would only use this snapshot when you need the initial value and you don't expect the parameter to change as you navigate through your application. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look. Now let's go ahead and go back to our app.component.html. What I wanna do is I wanna change the structure of our application to where the app.product component is part of the main index or the main component of the application and then we will navigate to the detail directly under that. So we're going to define our app.products component in HTML. Now I'm gonna save that. We'll, we'll notice that now we have two of the components listed, but we're gonna go back to the app.module.ts and we're going to remove the redirect and that's gonna prevent the products component from automatically being navigated to. Now we can see that we have a page.found, which is great. So what we wanna do now is let's go ahead and click on the memory card ID. Now we can see that the memory card shows up. It's set memory card, product name, the price is 500. But what happens when we click on the pin drive? Well, the product changed the two, but for some reason our state or the product name is still memory card. The price is still 500. Let's click on power bank. The URL is changing. I can see the three in the URL. However, the state of the component hasn't changed. What's going on here? Well, let's close this app that component and we're gonna go back to our product detail. When we handle parameters, we normally retrieve the value of the parameter in the ng on init lifecycle hook. This is when the component is initialized. But when the user navigates to the component again and again and again, and Angular does not create the new component, but reuses an existing instance, then the ong on init method never gets called again. Therefore, we will never get the updated value by using the snapshot. In order to support this scenario, we have to actually subscribe to the observable param map property, and then we can retrieve the latest value of the parameter and update the component accordingly. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now let's use an observable to subscribe to the parameter value changes. I'm gonna start by creating a new sub variable, and this is gonna be of type subscription. I'm gonna set this.sub equal to this.route.paramMap.subscribe, and this is going to be the parameters. So we're gonna pass the params, and we'll say let ID equal params.get, the name of the ID, which is in this case ID, and then this.product, equals this dot product service dot get product and then we're going to pass the id now this is very similar to the snapshot approach we did earlier but this allows us to subscribe to parameter value changes so after i save this i can now select a, a value or select our product in the list the url is updated to one we saw that the product name and price updated pen drive power bank pen drive memory card as you can see, the URI is still updating as it was before, but we're responding to or subscribing to the value changes of those parameters as we navigate. This makes our application function as we would expect. On a side note, when you do subscriptions, I would suggest implementing the on destroy, which will be ng on destroy, taking this.sub and calling unsubscribe, just to tidy things up a bit. And that's all there is to it. You have now implemented passing parameters during route navigation. Now that you know how to pass parameters from one component to another component during navigation in Angular, it's time. That's right, it's time to announce the winner for the one year subscription to the Infragistics Ultimate worth nearly $2,000. And the winner is Thomas Berthelsen. Congratulations, you are the winner, my friend. I will be contacting you very shortly on how to claim your license. Are you a developer trying to prove your dev skills Maybe you wanna learn some tips and tricks? Well, subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and let me know what you wanna learn next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.